although I'm going to make more changes to my text until I actually call this thing complete, I want to start considering the layout right now. I, I feel like uh, I'm at a good point with my text and anything more I do from now is really like going to be marginal refinements. So, but before I even bother doing them, I want to look at my layout. Now, what I'm aiming for is something that looks similar to this, right? Here we have all of those, we have the dictionary list and the headers all enclosed in some kind of container that has some spacing from the top and as I you know move the window it's it's always the element is always sitting in the middle so before I even bother doing anything I'm gonna think this out okay this is pretty simple if what all I need to do to get that on my end is I'll wrap all this stuff in a in a div container and then I could apply some margin to the top to bring it down and if I define a width for it and I set auto margins for the left and the right hand side then I'm gonna get exactly what's happening here so I'm gonna go back to Dreamweaver and I need to go to my HM, uh, HTML document and I'm gonna go right to code view I want to go right to code view because that way I don't want to trust design view because if I select well let me show you a lot of times what happens is you can select all this stuff in design view but it's not necessarily picking up all of the code sometimes I mean look look what happened over here it didn't actually even insert that the beginning h1 tag and likely if I then just went and inserted a div container in there and I just said let me name it like container oh well okay well you got me look at that I was a little mistrusting of Dreamweaver but good for good I'm glad it did it right so it put the container where it needed to go but ultimately although it did it right you need to verify this in code view. Don't just do it in design view and assume that it works right because you may get some some inconsistencies there. And now since this part is the end of the div container, I don't know if I'm going to add any more uh, div tags later, but I'm going to put a comment in here. Ends container. There we go. And now what I need to do is actually uh, although I wrapped it in a div container without me defining anything in the style it doesn't really mean anything so let me go to my style sheet and I am going to start just how I set up this type comment in there I'm gonna do that down at the bottom over here let me go down and I'm gonna set up layout so I'm keeping things organized so everything's kind of in a in a logical place and like any ID ID selector I'm gonna start it with a hash container and now what do I need to define for this thing well I said the first thing I need to define is the width right so I'll do width and let me go 950 pixels and now margin uh, Actually, let me let me do a quick note about margins and and using the uh, shorthand notation for it. Now you see here that all these tag or these attributes rather these CSS attributes are valid. So if I wanted the long way for me to do this with the most amount of of code is for me to go margin top and then let me do 30 pixels. Then I could go down here and do margin. Uh, let me do left then I could do auto and then margin right and that also will be auto and what happens now is when I go back to my page okay I got it, it looks good uh, well not doesn't really look good but something's going on oh something in my syntax right it's always what did I do wrong here margin Oh, well, it works well when you spell it correctly. There we go, margin. 
so let's give that a refresh and there we go uh, although it doesn't look exactly in the middle right here when I expand it I see that these things are in fact um, they're still there and interestingly enough I lost my jQuery uh, that background function that I was doing so I'm gonna need to investigate what's going on but before I go there you know this looks good and and I like it so um, what I don't like though so far in my implementation is is a couple things oh well I'll tell you why it broke again again look at this just syntax and this is great because I'm just learning I'm making mistakes right now and you get to see what I'm doing what happened here I never closed it I bet you and you, actually look at that look at this visual indicator too even even rows over here is blue when it shouldn't be because it's kind of being treated as an attribute and once I close it it turns this purple color to let me know that it's right so now let me try this again ah look at that so you know good thing I didn't know why I broke it I thought maybe I added something to my HTML but good thing I looked at the last thing I did which was my CSS um, this impl implementation so far is good there's only one thing that I don't like about it I'm using like uh, I guess CSS longhand uh, not many people use that word but there's a better way for me to set margins over here and that's to use the shorthand method for margins so here's what I'm gonna do just for right now I'm going to comment this code out because I want to refer to it right but I'm gonna start using the margin shorthand and now margin shorthand starts with just margin no left right or anything and now think of it it goes clockwise so the first thing I'm gonna put up top over here is the margin top and that was 30 pixels okay the second thing I'm gonna put is the right the margin right and that was what it was auto now I want the margin left or, I'm sorry the margin bottom which I left blank I can't leave it blank here since I'm doing uh, there's another way to do shorthand where you put left right and top down but we're doing all four so I need to define it as zero and now I need to make my left my last one auto and once I save this hopefully when I refresh my design over here it's gonna look exactly the same and it does so uh, I think you could already see for one just the advantage of using the shorthand in when you're typing it but two there's an advantage when the documents being being downloaded by the user now I know when you're working on a small site it doesn't really make that big of a difference but if you get like a job working at Yahoo or you know uh, Google or any one of these you know Facebook or any one of these companies that has tons and tons amount of traffic you know if you think about a million people hitting your site all the time and if this is like 2k worth of data all of a sudden when you have a million times 2k you're talking about a whole lot of extra data being downloaded so optimized code is shortened code and to optimize your CSS you definitely should use shorthand